I'll just do this. All right, 24. Can I everyone see it here? Okay, so the first thing I notice here is, we, so we always want to ask on these more complicated ones, what's the overall structure? What's the big picture? Okay, so what is this structure or big picture? No, it is not. Why not? So you could do the quotient rule and you could get it correct, but it's not what I advise. Why not? So yes, it looks like a quotient. Yeah, two, exactly. Two is not a function. Quotient rule is designed for when you have a function of x divided by a function of x. Two is not a function. So therefore, let's rewrite this so it's not a quotient, right? What can we write it as? One half times Okay. So you only have to use the quotient rule. It's kind of a last, you know, it's kind of your last choice. Quotient rule is the one that's hard to remember and it's a lot of work, right? So don't use the quotient rule on this because it's not a function of x divided by a function of x. It's, this is just a constant, right? This is just like multiplying by one half. So we can use the constant multiple rule. So the rate of change, so I'll call it dy dx, is just going to be one half times the rate of change of that. Yes, if you do the quotient rule on that thing that's given and work it all out, you will get the same function that we're about to get. But this is preferred, much preferred. Okay? Rate of change of e to the x. e to the x. Okay? Plus, so sum rule, right? Sum rule means just add the rate of change functions together. So rate of change of e to the minus x. So we have to recognize the structure of that is a composite function. A composite function. You have a function negative x plugged into e to the x. So, so yes, it's, it will start by being e to the minus x. Exterior function, keeping the interior function as it is. But then, by the chain rule, times times the rate of change of the interior function. Our interior function here is the opposite of x. Rate of change is negative 1. Done. That's it. So, for product rule and quotient rule, you're only required to use one of those if both are functions of x, right? A function of x divided by a function of x, or a function of x times a function of x, or whatever the independent variable is. If one of those is a constant, isolate it as a constant, and then don't use the product rule. Don't use the quotient rule. Less chance of error this way. Less chance of making error. Questions on 24? 26. Same thing. Let's not use the quotient rule. But we do have to do, so we could use the quotient rule. Again, we could use it. But how could I start by rewriting this instead? So y equals 2 times e to the x plus e to the minus x to the negative 1. And now, what's the structure of this? So the, the structure of the last one was constant multiple times a sum. What's the structure of this? It's the chain rule, right? So that the overall structure here is chain rule. Something to the negative 1. Something to the negative 1, okay? Times a constant. So now, to say y prime. So y prime. Hold on to the constant times the rate of change of that. So it's going to be? No. So, well, so we could do inside out or outside in. But if we're going from the outside in, overall structure is something to the negative 1. So the rate of change is? Negative 1 times that thing. Leave it as it is, right? Interior function stays as it is. 
to the negative 2 times the rate of change of the interior, times the rate of change of the interior, which is e to the x. We already did this, right? Same function, has the same rate of change. And that all in brackets times 2. Okay, on the, so one, one thing that students will do is if you do have a function of x divided by another function of x, some students like to just avoid the quotient rule altogether and always do that kind of this technique by changing it into a product. That's not allowed on the mastery. You've got to show that you know the quotient rule. Okay, so if you want to do that, go through that work to check your answer, that's okay. But if, you, if it's given as a quotient, you have to apply the quotient rule on the mastery. Exam, so that you can show that you know the quotient rule. As opposed to setting it up as a product with that thing to the negative one and doing product rule. Okay? So sometimes students have done, they tried to do the whole mastery without having to do the quotient rule because they changed them all to products. Not allowed. Okay? Not allowed. Questions on 26. Does it make sense? Any questions? What was the last one? 54? Confirm that, is that right? Fifty-four, fifty-seven. Wanna do both? Let's do both. Fifty-four. What do we ask first? What's the overall structure of that thing? What's the overall structure of that? I heard product and I heard quotient. Neither are correct. Something squared. The overall structure of this is something squared. Therefore, rate of change, the rule that will apply is power rule with something squared. So uh, dy dx equals, what's the power rule for something squared? Two times that something, right? The interior function stays as it is to the first, but now it's chain rule, right? Times what? Times the rate of change of the interior. How do we find the rate of change of the interior? That's a quotient, quotient rule. This is a quotient because you got a function of x over a function of x. Okay, so... Here we go, quotient rule. So it's going to be times the quotient rule, which is low d high. What is d high? Negative sine x plus or minus high d low. All over. Low squared. So it's it's power rule, two times that thing to the first times the rate of change of the inside. What's the structure of the inside? It's a quotient. Got to do the quotient rule. Questions on 54? Yes, please. Uh, is there, I just don't know this, is there any difference between sine squared x and sine x? Oh, good point. No. So here, here, this means, or for any trig function, when they, when they stick the exponent after the name and before the argument or input, that means this. But neither of them means this. What does this mean? Square the input and then apply the sine function. Okay, so these two top ones are equal both of which are not equal to this, so don't do that. If you mean, if you mean the, the value of the sine squared, use one of the top two. This will always mean square the input and then apply the sine, which is different. Same with cosine. All the trig functions, yeah. same thing. Cosine, tangent, secant, all like this. Whenever you see that, it's not great notation, but it's so universal that we gotta know it. Whenever you see that, it means this. 
Good question. Thank you. Other questions about 54? 57. What, so what do we ask first? What's the overall structure of that? No. Not chain rule. Not product. It's a sum. It's a sum. So as a sum, we're, all we're going to do is take the individual rates of change and add them together. So now we look at the first one. We say what's, we're doing the rate of change of ln of ln of x. What's the overall structure of that? Okay, the overall structure is natural log, and, but it has chain rule, right? So it's natural log with chain rule. So it's going to be 1 over the interior function as it is times the rate of change of the interior function. That is a chain rule there. Chain rule with the overall structure of natural log. Okay? Second, what's the overall structure of that? <coughs> e to the something with chain rule, right? So the overall structure is e to the something. But we have a chain, it's e to a function, so it's a chain rule. So e to the what? Leave the interior function as it is, e to the sine x, times the rate of change of the interior. There's 57. Done. Questions on that one? Okay, let's talk about the master exam. The master exam will consist of two parts, first half, second half. The first half, so let's go to, if you go to homework solutions and exam prep, where you get these practice problems. So now those practice problems are in this first folder, mastery exam, you're going to do more for Wednesday. Okay, so there's, there's that same list that you've been using. And now I've posted the list of rules, let's look at that, for your study purposes. And then, so this is what I handed out Friday. And then the bottom of that, now I have the general rules. The constant multiple rule, chain rule, product rule, and quotient rule. Okay? This is everything you need to know. Now just, we just have to learn how to use them in combination. Right? We have to use, learn how to use these in combination. So that is there for your reference. And there's practice problems. And so now the... Uh, the actual mastery exam will consist of two parts. Like I said, the first half will be 25 really easy ones, like these. And we'll do these, in, we'll just practice in a second. We'll do these in a second. But this is like the first half. Just, a, just a real simple, okay? You'll have 25 of these, like this, not these, but 25 simple ones like these, okay? That's the first half. You do all of them, okay? Make sure you do all of them on the mastery exam. The instructions are clear, but sometimes students' brains are not, okay? All right, you're gonna do all of those. And then the second half will be 10 problems that come from these 48, okay? So your second half of your exam will be to do 10 assigned problems. You won't know which ones you're gonna get of these 48, okay? These will not be collected for homework. So you're, it's up to you to dig in. And these are all, all different rules. Everything's, everything's here, okay? Including some tough ones in combination, okay? Which we'll work on today. So again, first half, you're gonna complete 25 easy ones. Second half will be, you're gonna get assigned 10 of these. And you're going to do 10 of these. And that's the master exam. To pass the master exam, you need 90%. 90% is passing. If you get 90% or better, your grade is 100 with the master exam on the first attempt. That's a pass or fail. And, but a pass on the first attempt gets you 100 for a grade. Okay? Next time you take it, so if you don't, you take it a second time. You still have to get 90% to pass. But now you're going for like a 90 or something. You're not going for 100 as your grade anymore. But you still have to pass it, which means 90% or better. And then likewise, third and fourth tries. You have to always get 90% to pass. 
but your grade on each attempt is going down. Your possible your grade that you could get. There's a question over here. So is, is it just out of 35? No, hey, hold, hold more. Those 25 are worth two points each, and the 10 are worth five points each. So it's 50 50. 50 points for the easy ones, 50 points for the 10 harder ones. How weighted is like a math exam? Half of an hour exam. So, the, the, so if you get 100 on the master exam, that's worth one half of a normal exam. Yeah? Can you post that at the first point on? We're going to do those in a second, but they're different. You're not going to get those. Yeah, yeah. Right. We're going to do them right now. We're going to do them right now. Any questions on the, the format of the mastery exam? Again, so students have been confused. The instructions are clear, but I'll just verbally say it and please read carefully. You're going to do all 25 at the beginning. There's going to be 25. You're going to do all of them. And then the second half, you're going to be directed to do 10 of these. You can only do those 10. Is it clear? So let's work on, just do this fast so we can get to some harder ones. So just so you get a feel for the first half of the mastery exam. Go, see if you do it in like two minutes, two or three minutes. Don't you, so practice without using your rule sheet. So like the, put yourself in the test situation. So don't use your rule sheet. See if you remember them. See what you remember. Oh, no chain rule on these. There's no chain product or quotient rule, okay? These are all can be done with just the basic rules and all can be done with power rule. So that means some of them you're going to have to change it first so that you can use just the plain old power rule. Don't use chain rule on any of these. Two ln of x. Two natural log of x. Is it the L? Is it the L? How about that? Is that better? Okay, so like what I'm talking about for no chain rule is without chain rule. Okay? Without chain rule. So you got to know your laws of exponents. You have to know your laws of exponents. No chain rule. Yeah. 13 is e to the 2x. Oh, yeah, that, okay, that's chain. That, that, that one you have to chain. What's that? So, so simple, yeah. right? Yeah. Don't use chain rule. Unless you have to, like this one. That one you'd absolutely have to.
1 over the cube root of x squared. This is 1 over the cube root of x squared. Okay, these are the ones I want to do. Number two. So we want to rewrite that as a power. X to the what? What powers? Do we need a single power if we're going to use the power rule? So if it's square root, that means it's half root, but it's cubed. So the power is? Three halves. Do you see that's not the rate that's not the rate of change function that is the same that's the original function so now we're ready to apply the power rule to get the rate of change which is answer okay here's something students do all the time they write x to the three halves equals three halves x to the one half correct the accumulation function does not equal the rate of change function. There are two different functions. If you do that, you get a zero. If you ever do that on the mastery exam, if you write that the accumulation function equals the rate of change function, we're not even going to look at what you wrote. It's a zero on that problem. Does it make sense? That's, that's serious. Because they're not equal. That's very important. That's a different function. That's an accumulation function. This is that corresponding rate of change function. So I put an arrow. Or write dy dx, or write y prime, or something. But don't write that the two functions are equal. No, you're writing out. You're writing out answers. There's no multiple choice on this. In the master exam, you're writing out the rate of change functions. Yeah. Yeah, you can express the rate of change function in many ways. That's correct. The, what I'm saying if not to do is don't ever say that accumulation equals rate of change. Questions on two, are we good? Five. So this is just this thing we haven't seen very often, but it's going to be 1 over x, ln of 5. 9. Sorry. 1 over x, ln of 9. That's applying that rule for a log, uh, in this case, base 9. Okay, number 8. Rate of change. E squared, right? Rate of change is E squared. Zero. E squared is a constant. It is a number. If an accumulation is constant, the accumulation is constant, the rate of change is zero. Number nine, x to the pi. So for this, is it an exponential function or power rule? That's what you have to figure out on these. You have to make sure you know. Is that exponential? An exponential function or a, uh, a monomial using the, for the power rule? Power rule. So your x is your base. So it's going to be pi x to the pi minus 1. Don't write 2.14. You just got, you just wrote a different function than that. That's not 2.14, right? We, exact. These rate of change functions have to be exact. If you write 2.14, it's not exact. You just, you just rounded your exponent. Okay, uh, what's next? 14. Pi to the 1.5. Rate of change is zero. Rate of change is zero. 15. First, we've got to rewrite the uh, function. So y equals x to the negative, because it's in the denominator, 2 in the numerator, because it's squared, 3 in the denominator, because it's cube root. x to the negative 2 thirds is what that is. Rate of change is? 
Negative 2 thirds x to the negative 5 thirds. Do you see how you can then do that without the chain rule? And it's much preferred, okay? Just write it as its exponent, x to the negative 2 thirds. And then negative 2 thirds x to the negative 5 thirds. Rate of change. I didn't hear enough zeros the first time. Zero. Rate of change. Zero. Zero. These are constants. These are numbers. They're not functions of x. Well, they could be a function of, of x, but just no matter what x is, it's this constant value. Okay? And so rate of change is zero. Uh, so this is the flavor of the first half. In the first half of the exam, you will do all 25 that are given to you. You will do all 25, and they'll be similar to these. Questions? Okay, let's do harder ones. Yes, it's all been recording. Okay, here we go. So this is this is an easier, harder one. What do we say? Always identify the structure first. What's the structure of this? It's not sum. Square root or power rule. Square root or power rule. Okay. So then it's going to be chain rule because we got stuff inside, right? So so the structure is square root or to the one half, and then it's chain rule because you got a function inside of that. So this is essentially the structure of this is the square root of another function. All right, so so let's, let's change it up. So you can you can do these chain rule problems inside out or outside in. If we were to do it inside out, we would start with the rate of change of g, and then we would multiply by the rate of change of the exterior with respect to g. So what would that look like? Rate of change of g times the rate of change of a square root function with respect to g, keeping it as it is. So I'm just change the order, and you can do them either way. I think sometimes sometimes inside out is a little friendlier, especially when you have the multi-layer chain rules. We'll see one of those later. Okay, you could also have uh, one half g, g g of x to the negative one half. That's the same thing. All right, so all we need then is to find the rate of change of g, and this will be the structure of our answer. Rate of change of g, it, or, yeah, so g is the that function. So rate of change is just going to be what? A product rule plus the rate of change of sine. So product rule will be first times the derivative of the second. Oh, so by the way, we are doing derivatives. The unfortunate thing about the term derivative is you can, so derivative doesn't give you any meaning for what it is, right? So mathematicians derive things all the time. Okay, what are we deriving? What are we deriving? Rate of change functions. So, so yes, when you hear derivative in mathematics, it's talking about a rate of change function. So, so we want uh, the derivative of the first times the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Did I say that wrong? The first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So the first times the derivative of the second, 7 to the x secant squared, plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is 7 to the x ln of 7, there's your product rule, plus derivative of sine, sum rule. And then we're done. So we, get, we got our overall structure, we got that rate of change of the interior function there, and then we just write down the answer. It's long, but right. If you if you just if you focus on structure first and then assemble your pieces, it's easy. Focus on structure first, get the pieces that you need, and then you just assemble it. Not hard, right? Any questions on this one? I'm going to have time for some harder ones. That's why I went kind of fast for this one. Last chance for questions on this one. Okay, so finish it in your notes later if you didn't copy it all down. Okay. What do we do first? Now they're getting good. What do we do first? Identify the structure. Yeah, so, yeah. 
So which rule is going to apply in the big picture? In the big picture, in the structure of it. This is a product of two functions, so it's going to be product rule. So the, the structure of this function is one function times another. And we know we're going to need P, or we're going to need W, or we're going to need rate of change of P and rate of change of W. Well, we've got P and W. We don't have to write those down again. They're right there. So we just need the rate of change of each of those. So rate of change of P now, or the derivative of P. Overall structure. All right, so there's our, we know that our answer is going to be like this. It's going to be product rule. Our answer is going to be product rule. Okay, rate of change of P. I did ins I did. I worked from the inside out, so I did the rate of change of the inside first, then times the power rule on the to the ninth. Check your rate of change of P. Agree with that? Right. Yeah, go ahead. The rate of change of negative 5x is negative 5. The rate of change of negative 5x, that's a linear function, right, with a, with a rate of change of negative 5. Okay. Here is rate of change of w, which is at e to the something function. Go ahead. Don't simplify anything, but what do you want to do? 3x to the minus 1 half? That's fine too. Yeah. yeah, if you did your square root by power rule instead of like what I'm calling the square root rule, then that's fine. Yeah. So we're basically done. We decided from the beginning that our structure was product rule, so our answer would be like that. We got the pieces, and now we just assemble it. Okay, so it, it, you know, it looks ugly when you finish, but there's nothing hard about that, right? There's nothing hard. If you, if you grasp the overall big picture, the structure, and do it a piece at a time, then you just fill in the blanks. Okay, so if you have a question, ask. So I know there's several of you who are being vocal and you're, you get it. Others of you are being quiet, so don't, is there, is there a question? Don't say, oh, I'll just figure it out later. Ask if you're not sure, yeah. W, this one? So uh, this is basically what? This is um, the structure of this is e to the something. It's, so it's e to a function of x. I'll call it g. Okay. So the structure of it is e to a function of x, which is chain rule. So what's the rate of change of e to the something? So now we're going to do that. So we're going to do uh, so this w. So we've got my w, what I call w, e to the gx, w prime is going to be what? It's going to be the rate of change of that, and e to the something, it's just e to the something, so there's that part. Then times the rate of change of the interior, which I put first this time. So the interior function is 6 radical x, what's the rate of change of that? The rate of change of that is, apply the square root rule, so it's going to be 6 over 2 radical x. So this is the rate of change of the interior. So this is just chain rule. Does 
Does it help? You, okay. Other questions on this? You go, your turn. Go. What are you gonna do first? What's the structure? What's the structure? Closure rule. Okay, here we go. So our we got to break up the numerator and the denominator. We know that the rate of change is going to follow the product rule. That's our overall structure. So all we need is the rate of change of f and the rate of change of g. So we just think of those as separate problems, rate of change of f, rate of change of g, and just assemble it like that. Here we go. Rate of change of f is the cosine of the cosine times the opposite of sine, which is the rate of change of the interior. So it's chain rule. Chain rule is the rate of change of f. Questions on that? So the rate of change of g is going to be e to that something times the rate of change of that something, which will be negative cosine of 3x and then by a chain rule times 3. There's a chain rule. There's another little chain rule in there. So you get sine of 3x, which would be cosine 3x times 3. So question, So that's, this is really, well, the only thing you might have a question about is one of these two uh, derivatives. Are we good on both of those? Yeah. Uh, negative sine 3x, the derivative, where, where does the negative 3 come out of that? The negative comes from the fact that there's a negative right here. And the 3 comes to the fact that you're doing the sine of 3x, which is the rate of change is cosine of 3x times 3. So it's two different things. Negative comes from that, and the 3 comes from that. You see it? When you put it all together, it looks like this. Low d high minus high d low over low squared. <coughs> Okay, so you're going to have more from the bank due on Wednesday, and then I encourage you to get going on the, or sorry, more from the practice problems list. You can start working on the problems from the bank for the mastery test. Thursday night. <laughs>